Hello and welcome to Crosstalk International. I'm Josh Weiss. And I'm Elijah Weiss. And today we're going to be bringing you three generations of Weisses as we go through this TV series. Eli, tell us a little bit about the TV series and recap last week's episode if they missed it. So this series is titled Know Your Purpose and God's Three Rules of Money. Last episode we learned the first rule of money, which is it's never about the money, it's always about the decision. We also learned that we need to know our purpose and not only know our purpose, but pursue our purpose. Sometimes that means you might need an attitude adjustment from God. There's gonna be more of this uh, in this episode. I know it's gonna be meaningful for you, so I wanna encourage you, stay tuned. I'm gonna throw it to my dad. Let's get right into it. Well, I'm back and I'm serious. Thank you for not sending your money if your response was in faith and obedience to God. If you had heard a message and acted out of emotion and sent some big contribution when we needed it, but God didn't want our ministry to have it, you would not have been helping us. In fact, you may have hindered me from learning about money rule number one. Remember, God's money rule number one it's never about the money. It's always about the decision. When we face a choice in life or ministry, we must seek God. Our bank balances should not determine our answers. If we can easily afford a project, it does not ensure that we should take on a project. Conversely, if we cannot afford the cost of a particular project, that does not prove that the decision is not according to the will of God. It might be God's will, but not His time. Or it might mean that God will provide in ways we had not expected. Certainly, our dependence should not be on our credit cards or our credit lines. Our dependence must be on God alone. By the way, I must also mention that our dependence should not be on our friends or family. We need to love our friends and cherish our family, but we should never look to them to be our source of provision. God may lead them to help, but it is toward God that we must always look. You see, terrible things can happen when a ministry is allowed to become dependent on anyone but the Lord. It is worse when ministers of the gospel become dependent on those to whom they minister. God forbid, but a minister might lose his trustworthiness. You see, when the financial result of a message becomes a consideration, the minister is in danger of using his influence to manipulate his friends or his audience to produce the desired financial results. And equally devastating, we must all recognize that a flock can neither trust nor be trusted beyond the staff of the Good Shepherd. If you know people, you realize it is far too risky to depend on man. God is much more trustworthy. We must also remember that a man or woman in need of godly counsel will often seek godly leadership from a minister. If money is in the equation, the listener or parishioner must always be suspect as to the motive of the minister. You know, subconsciously, the parishioner might question the pastor's motivation, but the risk doesn't end there. Perhaps an even worse condition has the opposite effect on the hearer. When a sheep hears a message and responds to supply needed resources, it can create an unhealthy dependence or an unrealistic expectation. When shepherds become dependent on the sheep, someone gets hurt. Sheep can get barbecued or the shepherd can get trampled. No pastor needs a rich parishioner holding sway by the purse strings. That can emasculate a man of God who's supposed to be empowered by the Lord. Neither circumstance leads to the glory of God, and that is why I believe it imperative to convey some often overlooked yet profound facts about God's economy. The servants of the Lord are not dependent on the limited resources of the flesh. 
In fact, people who control money are quite capable of using their money in well-intended, but often poorly directed ways to control God's servants with man's funding capabilities. The Lord does not need my money, your money, or anyone's money to accomplish his purposes. And actually, it's an insult to divinity to suggest that our mammon has the power to stop or start any plan of God. I want every faithful servant of the Lord to remember that God holds all our provision in open hands. As we serve to accomplish His purposes, I believe His hands remain open as our hands remain open. We are wondrously equipped to give, to receive, and to continue in the service to which we are called. We simply need to trust God alone and never confuse the folks we're called to serve as becoming the source of our provision. Now, it is a glorious reality that the Lord touches plain, simple, faithful individuals to participate in every work He directs. I know that He does. We serve together, we sow together, and we reap together. Yes, this is a faith ministry. Yes, this is also a listener-supported outreach, and I have the privilege of thanking those of you who pray for us and who partner with us, and we continue to serve together. And I'm happy to report that the harvest continues to grow and multiply. You know, it's, it's a high call to continue boldly reaching out to change lives with the radical truth of our Jewish Savior. But it will always be His will that directs our steps. It must never be our needs or your provision the charts our course. I'm blessed to know that my only debt is to the Lord. I love you, but my call is to serve Him, not to impress or convince you. I'm not a carnival barker, a multi-level marketer, or an infomercial huckster. I'm just a guy who got saved and has the privilege of telling anyone who's interested that Jesus changed my life and He is still in the life-changing business. I simply want to share some faith principles that I have found to be helpful. If you can't afford to take a certain step of faith, your inability should not cause you to disobey the Lord. Your call from God is not based on your bank account. If the Lord calls you, He will equip you for the call. Don't let either lack or abundance confuse you. You need to know the will of God for your life. You see, just because you cannot immediately afford to take certain steps, it does not mean that the steps are not part of God's plan for your life. Likewise, just because you can afford to make a certain decision, that's not always a good enough reason to make the affordable choice. You need to make your decisions based on whether or not the choice will please the Lord. If you know that the will of the Lord is is clear about a certain matter, you must obey the Lord. He's well able to provide for the costs if He has directed the decision. Conversely, if you're pursuing a decision that is not according to the will of the Lord, even if you think you can afford it, God is equally well equipped to ensure that you can't afford it after all. Trust me, funds have a way of drying up or costs can escalate unexpectedly. Now, I'm not trying to scare you or cause you to think that God is going to wipe out your bank account. But people have been known to put their money into a bag with holes or into what seemed like a great investment that tanked. As the ancient Hebrew prophet Haggai told us, we should consider our ways. In an age of shaky banks, volatile stocks, and bond markets, his warnings are more relevant today than hundreds of years ago before Christ when His words were penned. The prophet wrote, Consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And just as we can lose our money 
if not protected and directed by God, we can just as unexpectedly, we might have saved our money, but then we're forced to spend more than we had saved in ways we had never anticipated. Have you ever had your household budget or some business or ministry project knocked off course by some unforeseen skyrocketing cost or an emergency expenditure that whacked your well-designed plan? Well, you were certainly able to afford it when you started, at least so you thought. But then life had other plans. It's a terrible feeling to have saved enough for the expected budget, but then ran out of money due to cost overruns, or you learned your bag was full of holes. That is why it is much more important to know the will of God than to know a good accountant or project coordinator. Many years ago, I wrote a song about this matter. It was written because of the words of this prophet Haggai. It's called Consider Your Ways. Consider your ways, consider your ways. Have you gambled on a dream or dreamed your life away? Consider your ways, consider your ways. What's left on the bottom line at the end of your day? Consider your ways, consider your ways Will they still work tomorrow? Did they work yesterday? Consider your ways, consider your ways Will your pain still be with you when your riches fade away? Consider your ways Consider your ways Are you gonna live forever? Will you die someday? Consider your ways Consider your ways Please let His love lead you to Eternal life today Consider your ways Consider your ways Consider his love, consider his pain, consider your ways, consider your ways. If you're gonna come to Jesus, consider to pray. God is good, he loves us. He has a plan for us, but we have to have an interest in pursuing that plan. We need to get about building his house. As you can see, I was much younger when I sang that song, and I was younger still when I wrote it so very long ago. But the truth of the prophet's message has not diminished. At that time, God wanted his people to rebuild his temple. He had a plan for his people and a plan for their resources. There would have been no lack had they simply known his will and did his will. The same holds true today. If we know his will and we do his will, we will have what we need to accomplish what he desires. But if we ignore him, regardless of how much we have, it will never be enough. You may not be able to watch it leak out of your money bag, but it will be gone when you need it if you use it improperly. Disregarding the will of God is a bad idea. Disregarding His direction for your life and for your money will end up leading to lack instead of abundance. If you have ever had a series of unplanned expenses before a task was completed, you understand the feeling of sadness experienced when struggling to accomplish something that seemed easily affordable when you began. Find the will of God. Do the will of God. And none of these things will hinder you as you pursue that which pleases Him. All of our provisions are held by God with open hands to accomplish His purposes. We don't need to fear running out when God is with us in what we do for Him. God is good all the time. This is an unchanging fact. 
God holds what we need in open hands. As he calls us, he provides for us so that we can accomplish that which pleases him. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, just for a moment, consider how many people entered the promised land when they came from Egypt. Think about Joshua. Joshua had the call to bring the children of Israel into the land of milk and honey after Moses had gone to be with the Lord. God told Joshua to command the priests to carry the ark across the Jordan River. The timing of this project could not have been worse. Moses was gone. The children of Israel had been professional nomads for 40 years. And perhaps most intimidating, there was a raging river separating a few million Jews with their herds and flocks from their destination. You see, everything was against tackling this project. It was harvest time in Canaan. That meant it was also flood season. The banks of the Jordan River had already overflowed, which is why the river was a wild torrent at the moment they approached it. Not only was drowning the likely outcome, but the other side of the river was not too inviting either. Jericho in the land of promise was dominated by a world full of non-Jews who had no love for Joshua and Brother Love's traveling gypsy slave caravan. Nothing lined up as we like it to when we are trying to identify the will of God. Do you ever assume when things line up, it proves that God wants us to move forward? Come on now, you know what I mean. When things seem to be heading in a smooth path toward a particular goal, it appears to be the will of God. Things are lining up. We presume the Lord is blessing our decision. And then, conversely, when they don't line up like ducks in a row, we presume that God doesn't want us to act. Now, sometimes that's a fair analysis, but at other times, the circumstances are completely inconsequential to understanding the will of God. Sometimes his will has already been revealed. That was certainly the case for Joshua. There were no prior signs or spiritual confirmations validating Joshua's decision to the rest of the board of directors. God had said yes, even though the circumstances were screaming no. And remember, things were even worse. No one had explained the will of God to the ites. The promised land was occupied by Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Jebusites. There was ites everywhere. The ites had no intention of quietly vacating the premises to make room for millions of escaped slaves from Egypt. And for a variety of practical reasons, this did not seem like the right time to attack Jericho. There were too many red flags. Let me ask you something. How many red flags does it take to turn you from the will of God? We'll talk about it after a short break. The mission of Today with God is to spread the gospel around the world. Thousands of lives have already been touched by the love of Jesus through this Bible video project, but so many more need to see, hear, and understand the love of God. And that is why we translated this project into the top 11 languages of India. Countless of millions of more souls now have access to these Bible films in their native tongue. But we need God's help and your help. That comes through prayer. Will you join us on this humbling journey and pray that we can complete this enormous task? Our team is in India where over a hundred pastors have been trained to distribute the Today With God project to the nation. But hundreds more and even thousands more need the training and the tools to go forward. We need God and we need your prayers. Now more than ever, the Word of God must be seen. That is why 
Today with God exists in the native languages of the nation of India. Most importantly, that is why we are excited to announce the launch of our Today with God mobile app. It's coming soon and we want to bring it to your language. Scan the QR code to let us know you're praying with us and we'll bless you with a free gift to show our gratitude. We thank you in advance for your prayers. Thanks for staying tuned. We're talking about Joshua, preparing to enter the promised land, facing enough red flags to cause any board of directors to turn yellow. But the promised land wasn't taken at the instruction of a board. It was under the express command of God, under the obedient services of a man of God. When the clear will of God is known, red flags will not stop our service. I think if we can only be directed by red flags, it means we do not know God's will. If we're unsure of what God wants us to do, instead of allowing circumstances to direct our choices, it's probably best to wait on the Lord. Now, looking back to Joshua's march to Jericho, it's evident that on the surface, there were plenty of red flags to turn Israel from mounting an enormous military campaign against the entrenched residents of the Promised Land who were staunchly prepared to defend their homeland against foreign invaders. And this fact did not account for the most daunting natural obstacle. The Jordan River waved a, a red flag so big that only a blind person or a man of faith would have moved forward. Joshua was forced to lead the children of Israel across a flooded river. But he did not turn back. You see, God had revealed his will to Joshua and the end of his glorious plan for Israel was known. He told Joshua that the waters would part and they would cross safely to accomplish each of the goals established by the Lord. Joshua followed God not the flags. So, how does this apply to any of us who might be struggling with circumstances standing in the way of our obedience and the success promised by God? Well, sometimes we need to put our feet in the water and take steps of faith. Other times, we need to stop and wait on the Lord. The important thing is not to allow a raging river to stop you or to follow the path of least resistance. We all need to find the will of God and then faithfully do what pleases Him. Trust God. Now, that does not mean, you know, that you take things for granted in your service to God. If the path looks perfectly clear, it does not mean we should go forward. A well-placed ambush of an enemy is never apparent. And if the road seems impassable and the journey impossible, it does not mean we should hesitate. When we know the will of God is to boldly go forward. You see, God is able to provide holy detours, safe passage, and even smooth sailing in a storm when it serves His purposes. Again, the issue is knowing the will of God. Sometimes, even when we come to a dry riverbed and there are no enemies present and everything lines up, sometimes we are still to stay put and enjoy the promises of God for us in the wilderness. We must do what pleases Him and not forget God's money rule number one. It's never about the money. It's always about the decision. God wanted me to remember that every serious decision should be filtered through the grid of prayer and godly counsel. We must not make choices based on our ability or inability to accomplish a given task. If the Lord calls you to an extreme purpose, He will provide for whatever extreme measures you are called to pursue in accomplishing His extreme will. Perhaps you are called to extreme faith. Perhaps you are called to be extremely fruitful in Him. The man or woman of God must seek the will of the Father and analyze choices according to what pleases Him. Then we can expect His blessings and protection. Then, either success or failure 
will serve the purposes of God in our lives and we can rejoice whether we win or lose. Because it is only when we submit our imperfect will to His perfect will that we can be assured that we will truly have all, everything, whatever is required for life and godliness, our extreme God will provide for us extremely well. God reminded me at a very deep level that I don't want what I can afford simply because it is affordable. Affordability in itself does not mean that it is right according to the will of God. And neither do I want to avoid what I cannot afford if it is in God's budget simply because it appears to overwhelm my meager capabilities. The servants of God depend on His budget, not their own resources. Soldiers of the cross don't go to war at their own expense. Someone else has paid the price. Someone else makes the provision. It is all to the glory of God, and He is well equipped to provide for His purposes, no matter how precious the cost. Remember, He sent His Son to pay the price for our sins. The price of telling the story is therefore comparably cheap at any price, and it only represents a small fractional part of what God prepared to announce His love. And I want you to believe God for whatever you are called to accomplish. And I want you to participate in every purpose He has called you to, even when it seems impossible according to human standards. Remember, we serve a God who created the world. He did it without a committee, without budget approval, and without a mortgage. On the seventh day, He rested. And nowhere does it say that on the eighth day, he created MasterCard to solve his problems. Now, right here, I must confess that God used financial lack to get my attention. It could have led me to put the ministry into debt. I could have easily leveraged 50 years of debt-free faithful service to expand the capability of this outreach. But would it have been right? Does debt serve God? Well, I'm not going to preach against it or for it. I'm going to say that I think it's almost time for me to teach you about God's second money rule. It's like when my wife does spring house cleaning. Please stay tuned. I know my grandmother, so I'm very curious what he's talking about when he says spring house cleaner. I guess you'll have to come back next time to see what he's talking about. Yeah, you want to make sure you, you tune back in. This episode here, you heard Dad talk about some important things, and one of them uh, that's very meaningful is it doesn't matter what's in your bank account. If God's given you a calling, if God's, if God's charged you with something that he wants, then the responsibility for provision to fulfill that comes on God. Yeah, no, definitely. One of the main things that touched me is he's just talking about that our choices, what's happening in our life doesn't matter. What matters is the call of God and that we follow that no matter what it means or what we think it means with our current financial situation. Well, we're out of time. I want to encourage you, if you miss any of this series, uh, check us out on social at Crosstalk TV. And of course, you can always reach us by phone, 1-800-688-3422. Until next time, shalom and God bless.